Hey family, it's Pastor Phil. Listen, so excited to be able to share with you this exciting news. Uh, before we bring the word and lift our morning offering, I want to share with you that on the 27th of this month, we will be moving back into our sanctuary. We will be having our corporate service. I uh, will be fellowshipping. As you can see, the chairs are already social distance. Uh, we have all of the protocols um, in place, uh, temperature gauges mashed, the whole nine yards. Uh, you know, it's going to be a tremendous time. I don't know about you, but I miss you. Um, and so uh, having the opportunity to fellowship together once again, um, you know, we're so excited about it. You can get all the information about protocols and the steps that we're taking uh, to prepare the sanctuary for you uh, on the website as well as on our phone app. Uh, you can go on there and see the reentry plan. We've got a reentry task force that has been working diligently um, to ensure uh, that the space is safe for you. Not only will we be here, but we will also be back up in Stroudsburg. So uh, all of our campuses will be having uh, in-person services, um, and we are blessed to know that the numbers are going in the right direction. Kids are going back to school to some degree, um, and it's an opportunity for us to join together and worship. We're going to do a Hebrews 10, 25. We're not going to forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Uh, so I want you to know that uh, this is a, an exciting time for us. We're overwhelmed. Now, you will have to RSVP. We're still going to have a limited amount of people in the building, so it's not going to be, uh, you know, at full capacity. We're only going to have uh, a small amount, actually 50% capacity. We're doing one service, um, and we want to test it for the first week uh, and see how it goes, and then we'll update you um, on weeks to come. Uh, there'll be no children's church and things of that nature. Uh, we're going to ask families that live together to sit together uh, to to minimize the spread of any potential um, uh, viruses. So we're excited about that. So be prepared to have your temperature check when you come in, hand sanitizer given to you when you come in. Uh, there'll be a mask check when you come in just to ensure uh, that we're doing things decently and in order. Well, guess what? You know what time it is in the house of Greater Shiloh. It is offering time. And I want to read to you out of Acts chapter 20. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed than it is uh, to give than it is to receive. And, you know, uh, I think that Paul uh, was talking about, of course, the work that was going on and how the churches were being active uh, in helping their community uh, and serving the less fortunate. And that is something that we always have to be mindful of. And I want to thank God for you uh, because Greater Shiloh uh, has been involved and engaged in sowing into our community, whether it's food, whether it's help with rent, car payments, utilities, uh, you know, the food pantry is running and we're gearing up uh, for our emergency homeless shelter which will run this year uh, with uh, significant modifications just to ensure that we're social distancing and all things are well. So we're excited to be able to know that our church is still engaged in serving um, the least of these uh, and fulfilling Matthew 25 and what I just read to you um, out of the book of Acts. So it's important that we remember it is more blessed to give than to receive. So this is an opportunity for you to give your tithe and your offering, your special offering. Uh, we have raised over over thirty thousand um, dollars in our um, relief fund, and that is because we have been giving, uh, me included, I uh, have been giving to that disaster relief fund, and we have blessed many families. I uh, talked to a brother the other day. He said, "Listen, me and my wife have been blessed during the pandemic, and so we're giving a little bit extra to that disaster relief fund to be able to help." the kingdom of God. So we are so grateful for all that you're doing um, and, and want you to know that as you continue to give, we as a church will continue to give and so into our community. You do know that the rent moratorium, uh, the eviction moratorium was up um, as of Monday or Tuesday this week. Um, and so we do have resources. If you are in danger of, of being evicted, you live in Northampton County, we do have resources um, that we can refer you to and support you with. So we want you to know that we are here with you. You are not alone. All right. Well, guess what? It's time to give, time to sow into the kingdom of God. You know how we do it. We do push pay uh, on, the, on the phone app, or you can go to the website, uh, or you can download push pay while you're waiting, or you can bring your offering to the church uh, on Wednesdays between 4 and 8 p.m., or you can just mail it. All that information is going to be down at the bottom of the screen. It's an opportunity for you to sow um, and to sow into the kingdom of God. We love you. We thank God for you. I'm, I'm reminded of Galatians 6. It says, be not weary in well-doing, uh, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. All right. 
It's time to give. Let's get ready to sow our uh, seed into the kingdom of God. Let me pray for you, Father. We thank you for the gifts that will be given. Father God, the tithe offering, the special offering, and we thank you for the giver. We pray that you would continue to pro provide uh, for their needs, uh, Father God, as they continue to sow into the kingdom of God, to consider the less fortunate, to consider the poor, the hungry, Father God, even the homeless. And we give you praise for that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless and sanctify the offering. Let it be used for the upbuilding and furtherance of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, it's time to give. God bless. We'll see you in a minute with the word of God. Hey, family, it's Pastor Phil. Um, I'm back, uh, you know, and excited to be able to share this word with you. We are beginning a brand new series, um, you know, for the month of September and maybe beyond. Uh, and it is called Unstoppable. Uh, and when I say that, I'm talking about you. Uh, that you are unstoppable and that God has an amazing plan for your life. And I'm going to try to draw it out today. I, I actually had to have somebody come in here and draw this because I'm, I'm a horrible artist. Um, but but I, I wanted to just really share with you, um, you know, the, 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 the purpose and the intention of this series. And it is really to help you um, to understand the divine plan of God, the divine purpose of God, uh, and the divine potential that God has placed in you as a child of God, right? And what God wants to accomplish in your life. And I thought it'd be cool to just kind of take a slow walk this month and then we're going to end probably on the 27th of the month when we're coming back into the sanctuary with the final message of Unstoppable, maybe um, a four-part series, maybe an eight-part series. The word is so strong as it relates when I was reading it. It's just, it blew me away. Um, and so somebody was joking me today and they said, well, didn't you just finish Truth Is, uh, that, that sermon series in Romans 8? I was like, yeah, but Romans 8 is so good that I'm going to continue my series and pick up in verse 29, and then I'm going to go uh, over to um, Psalms 139. But I want to, I want to, I want to get this in your spirit. You are unstoppable. That the only limitations that are on you are the limitations that you put on yourself. That God has given you everything you need. The Bible tells us according to life and to godliness. And COVID couldn't stop you, right? All of the racism couldn't stop you. The market crashing couldn't stop you. Unemployment couldn't stop you. You're still going, right? And, and, and I love Romans 8 because it really breaks out this revelation that nothing can separate us from the love of God, right? And, and, and Paul said, listen, I am persuaded. I know for a fact, I'm confident that nothing can separate me from this love. And as long as I have his love, I have capacity to keep going. I have the will to keep going. I have the strength to keep going. As long as I've got the love of God, it's hard to comprehend, right? The amazing plan of God over your life sometimes. You know, life can be so very difficult, right? With its twists and turns. I've had many disappointments in my life. Many a times I wish things would go another way, right? We've all been sick. We've all struggled. We've all had financial problems. We've all had our heart broken. We've all had relationship problems. We've all had familial problems, right? Nobody escapes the struggle of living um, on this earth and, and the, the sin and struggle that comes along with it. And, and the reality is we've struggled to pay bills on time, right? We, we've had have more months than we've had money, right? We, we've had to deal with racism and sexism, misogyny and prejudice. And what I want to remind you is that in spite of all of that, watch this, you are unstoppable. Last week, I talked to you from Romans 8, 28, and said that all things work together for good, right? And, and when I get that simple revelation that all things work together, then I understand that God is taking all of my stuff and working it together for my good. But unstoppable is about, listen, is about you and what God is going to do in your life as you submit your life to him. And so I want you to grab a hold of this revelation. I want to read to you from Romans 8, 29 and 30 out of the Amplified Bible. Bible. It said this, for those he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately share in his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. 
among uh, believers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, declared free of the guilt of sin. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly, a heavenly dignity. I want to tell you something that is so important for you to know. And I, I want you to grab this in your spirit. I want you to get it in your revelation. Uh, get it in your soul, right? That you need to understand something that is so important. Listen, God knew you before you existed. Let me give it to you over here so, so it looks really simple and plain. This here is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And this is them, watch this, in what? Eternity. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit existed before there was anything, right? Before there was ever anything, watch this, they were. God is preeminent. God is preexistent. He existed before there was anything. And it was God, come on, who brought humanity into what? The earth. And so all of us have a natural date of birth. Those whom he foreknew, which means in eternity past, before anything ever was, there was God. Right? God existed before humanity and God brought humanity into the earth. Genesis 1:26. He says, let us make man, make man in our image. And we're going to talk about this in a minute and after our likeness. And so we see here that God predated humanity. This probably should be over here a little bit. God predated humanity and out of God came humanity. So we all have what? a date of birth, a natural date of birth here on the earth. And that date of birth is so important. Then we all have, watch this, for those who are Christians, a DOS, which is a date of salvation. And then on this earth, we all have what? A DOD, a date of death. And then for those who have a DOS, a date of salvation, come on, when we die, we return back to the Father, back in eternity. And this is critically important for you to understand. So Romans 8 29 says, watch this, those whom he foreknew, knew when? Before the beginning of time. He also predestined. So God, who knew you before the beginning of time, predestined you to be conformed to the likeness of who? His son, Jesus Christ. And I'm, we're going to talk a little bit about this, and I'm going to break it down for you, but I want you to get this, that God knew you before, come on, he was in eternity past, and he knew you before you ever got here to the earth. You were with God, listen, you were with God before you were a human being. Before your date of birth, the Bible says, I knew you, which means that God had an intimate understanding of you before you ever existed. And, and why is that important for people to know? Because Romans 8, 29 tells us that he had a what? A foreknowledge of you. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 uh, uh, confirms and affirms that he says to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved you, watch this, as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself as my own. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So God is saying before there was ever anything, come on, come on, he knew humanity, that all humanity, listen, lived in God. Just like as a human being, come on, you lived in your father and you lived in your mother and it wasn't until they came together as one, come on, that your body began to be formed, right? And just like that, God carried us in him before anything that ever was, come on, and with him, he says, I knew you. So those whom he what? Foreknew or knew before, come on, he also did what? predestined to be conformed to the likeness of an image of his son. Let's go back to the fact that he knew you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says this, for we are what? His workmanship. Created where? In Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. And so in the heart and mind of God, before anything ever was, before humanity ever was born, come on, there was in the mind of God the predestination, watch this, that humanity would be conformed to the likeness of his son Jesus. That, that God was saying in all of this, I'm going to create mankind, but my, in, in, in the mind of God, mankind, watch this, would be conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ. And 
with being conformed to the likeness of Christ Jesus. Look at what Ephesians 2 says. He says, for we are his workmanship or his handiwork created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. So when God had in mind to create humanity, it was that humanity, those who would be chosen, watch this, would be able to do good works like the son, Christ Jesus, that Christ was the standard. Christ was the big brother. If you look at Romans 8, 29, those whom he foreknew, he also what? Predestined, means to set your end before your beginning, to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ, right? and ultimately share in his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved, and the honored among many brothers. I want you to grab this in your soul, that in the mind and heart of God, when you were created, it was that you would be, watch this, a son of God, that you would be a daughter of God, and that Christ would be the example and the standard, watch this, of living and righteousness here on the earth. Let me say it again. God knew you before. He said, those who he foreknew, he also set your end before your beginning. He said, remember, this is your date of death. This is your date of natural birth. Watch this. God in eternity set your end before your beginning. And, and, and let, me, let me read it to you in Psalms 139, verse 13. It reads like this, uh, and 14 and 15. For you formed my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will give thanks and praise to you for I am what? Fearfully and I am wonderfully made, which means like I am created. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being what? Formed in secret and intricately and skillfully formed as if embroidered with many colors in the depth of the earth. Y'all got to grab this simple revelation. Before there was ever anything, there was God. God, before he created anything, carried you with him in him, right? So we are in him and in you, he placed, watch this, this predestination to be able to do good works for those that are chosen, right? And so before he releases humanity in the earth, he's carried humanity with him like a father carries a child with him, like a mother has the egg that is necessary to bring forth. You do know women are born with all the eggs that they will ever have. Right, And so for them, come on, that what they have in them is preparing for what they will bring into the earth for those that will have children. And the reality is, is that a mother carries uh, children with her all of her life. A father carries children with him. And so when they come together, come on, there is the birthing. God carried us with him, right, from eternity past. And he says, before anything ever was, I knew you. That was a, that was a repeat. Now Psalms 139 tells us that God was there. I want to give you the miraculous reality of a Psalms 139. 139 and what it really means. Do you know the miracle of humanity is so deep? Do you know that in you, watch this, are a hundred trillion cells that begin with one cell? Your body is made up of uh, approximately a hundred trillion cells. They all come from one, from the division of one single cell. Every minute, 300 million cells die off your body. But that's really just a small fraction of the total cells we have. We produce 300 billion new cells every day and your body is constantly repairing and rebuilding. In other words, you are producing 300 billion new cells in your body today. That's why you can go to sleep at night. Come on, and you're, you're literally you're shedding. Come on, you can wake up and you'd be a couple pounds lighter than you were when you went to bed. Your brain is an amazing supercomputer. The brain is composed of about 80% water. The brain could hold five times as much information as the Encyclopedia Britannica. Nerve impulses travel at 170 miles per hour. Remember I told you about the neurons and how they fire. Oh, it does all of this on the same amount of power as a 10 watt light bulb. You are kidding me. Now my cells are being regenerated. I'm getting 300 billion new cells. Now my brain is doing all of this and it's only on the electricity that it would take to light a light bulb. When David says, come on, I am fearfully and wonderfully made you need to get a revelation of how deep God was. Come on, when he puts you together every day, 
The average person loses 60 to 100 strands of hair. But there's good news for some people. Watch this. We have to lose over 50% of our scalp hairs before anyone notices. Also, hair is virtually indestructible. Aside from flammability, human hair dis decays at such a slow rate that it is practically non, watch this, disintegrative. In other words, your hair, when God talks about having the hairs on your head numbered, this is a very deep revelation. Even though you can't see my hair and I'm looking bald, there's still hair inside my scalp. Watch this. Your heart works it out for you. The human heart creates enough pressure to squirt blood 30 feet. Such pressure is needed to pump blood through 60,000 miles of veins and capillaries. The heart pumps six quarts of blood circulating three times every minute. And one day your blood travels over 12,000 miles. This is the blood inside your veins. Like God did this thing and he put it together. Your, your, your 300 billion, come on, cells are being regenerated. Your hair, come on, is almost indestructible. Your heart is pumping like crazy. Your skin, come on, the skin that we have is the ultimate ultimate touch screen. Each square inch of your skin includes four yards of nerve fibers, 600 pain sensors, 1,300 nerve cells, 9,000 nerve endings, 36 heat sensors, 75 pressure sensors, 100 sweat glands, 3 million cells, and three yards of blood vessels. All of that, watch this, inside, inside, um, each square inch of your skin, four yards of nerve fibers. You got to understand that when God put this thing together, uh, he, he did it so amazingly. Your eyes alone are a study in genius. Our eyes can distinguish, listen to this, up to one million color surfaces and take in more information than the largest existing telescope. People blink, watch this, you probably just blinked just now, right? Once every four seconds, that's because Eyelashes act as, watch this, windshield wipers keeping dust and grime from getting into the eye itself. I hope you get it. Like you are an amazing creation. You are the apex of God's creation. The rocks are not, the mountains are not, the skies, the seas, come on, the animals. It is you and I. We are the apex of God's creation. I'm trying to tell you that you are unstoppable. The liver is a hardworking organ. Your liver works hard at over 400 functions, including detoxifying your body, protein synthesis, and the production of biochemicals necessary for digestion. However, you could have two-thirds of your liver removed for tra from trauma or surgery, and it will grow back to its original size in four weeks. God did this. God put a liver inside of you, come on, that is necessary for you to be able to rock and run with. And I'm telling you that God has made you unstoppable. Watch this. Take a deep breath. Your lungs have a surface area the size of a tennis court to oxygenate blood. Our lungs are filled with thousands of microscopic capillaries. The large surface areas make it easier for this to take place and get the oxygen where it needs to go. You have disposable stomach lining. Your stomach gets a brand new lining every four days. Strong digestive, did you hear that? Your stomach gets a brand new lining every four days. Strong digestive acids quickly dissolve the mucus-like cells lining the walls of the stomach so your body replaces them routinely before they are ever compromised. Listen, you can't even hide from your fingerprints at just 6 to 13 weeks of development, your fingerprints are being developed. In other words, when, when, when David talks about, you know, you being, um, uh, you know, um, um, specially, fearfully, and wonderfully made, you better get a revelation. This is no little thing, and we take for granted. So when I tell you, watch this, when I tell you that God, watch this, knew you before, not only did he knew you, not only did he know you, listen, but he designed you. Well, let me tell you the next point because I'm so excited about all of the points. I just, I can get overwhelmed. I mean, did you, did you hear all that I just shared with you uh, about how God made you wonderfully and how God set it up? Watch this. God knew you. Watch this. And let me say something else. He knew exactly what you would need for this journey, right? Check this out. Date of birth. God knew the day that you would be born. God knows the day that you'll get saved. And God knows the day that you'll die. You don't have the benefit of knowing that, right? And so we see that God released you into the earth at the point of time that you were supposed to be here. Listen, and God knows the day that you're going to die. But between here 
and here, come on, he knows the DOS, which is your date of salvation when you come to Christ Jesus. And I want you to grab a hold of this. Come on, that there is work for you to do. Watch this, from here to here. The date of salvation to the date of death. Now, your date of salvation may be here or it may be here, right? Everybody is different, but God knows exactly, come on, when you're going to say yes to him. And this blesses my whole heart because God has put everything in you that you need for life and godliness, come on, to be able to fulfill his will. He said that you are his workmanship, that we are his workmanship created where? In Christ Jesus to do what? Good works, which God prepared when? Beforehand, right? So it's not like God waited for you to be born to prepare your good works. He created your good works when you were here with him before anything ever was. When he was carrying you, come on, he already put the good works in you. He knows what gifts that you need to be able to fulfill your life journey, come on, before you return back to glory with him. And this is a powerful revelation because when you get it, you understand that your date of birth was no mistake. God knows exactly when you would come here into the earth. Now let me give you point two because I think point two will build on point one. Point two, listen, God predetermined, God had a predetermined plan for us to conform to the likeness of Christ Jesus. Now, let me say that again. Whom the Lord foreknew, knew before, he also predestined, which means to set your end before your beginning, that ultimately you would be conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ. So I'm born a natural birth with all of the things that I need to be able to live and survive. Somewhere along my journey, I come to relationship with Jesus. I recognize I'm a sinner. I recognize that I'm disconnected from the Father. I recognize that I've fallen far from God. And when I recognize that through repentance, right, through repentance, I am born again, my date of salvation. By turning to Jesus, Romans 10, 9, and 10, I come back to the Lord and become a child of God. God has predestined, watch this, predestined today. Let me show it to you in Ephesians chapter 1, verse Verse 4 and 5, even as he has chosen us in him when before the foundation of the world, listen, that we should be what? Holy and blameless before him in love. And he has done what? Predestined, which means our, he said our end before our beginning, us for adoption as what? Sons through Christ Jesus according to what? The purpose of his will. And Ephesians 1 says that he has predestined us to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus just like Romans chapter 8 does it. In the heart and mind of God, God always wanted to populate the earth with children, come on, who would look like Jesus. Jesus Christ, who would walk like Christ, who would fulfill the call of God. Let me show it to you in John 15, 16. He says this, you did not cho choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should abide. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he gave it to you. Watch this. He's saying, listen, that you were chosen by God, um, confirmed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Confirm, come on, in Romans chapter 8, that God predestined you. He chose you. Come on to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus. But watch this. What was Jesus like? Because if I'm supposed to be conformed to something, I need to know what Jesus was like, right? I need to know what the Son of God, the Son of Man was like. Because when I know that, then I'll know, come on, what God's predetermined intention was for my life. The problem is, is a lot of people don't know what Jesus is like. So if you don't know what Jesus is like, how do you know what you're supposed to be living out? John 6, uh, 44 says this, no one comes to, to the Father, watch this, unless he be drawn and I will raise him up at the last day. Understanding, come on, that those who have been chosen are drawn by the Spirit of God. You're not watching me by mistake today. It's because God is drawing you in the relationship with him by the Word, by the Holy Spirit. Maybe somebody came and shared with you the message of the gospel. You can't come unless you're drawn. Come on, but when you're drawn, you know that there's something in you that is pulling you back to God. Why? Because you were with him before anything ever was. You existed with him. And so when you hear his voice, when you feel the draw of God, come on, you know that there's something that is pulling you back in the relationship with him. Are y'all here with me today? Let me take you over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, 
beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being what? Transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so we see this revelation that those children of God who are called of God, who are chosen of God, predestined by God, are being transformed, which brings us into conforming reality of the presence of God, right? Transformation and, com and, and confirmation essentially go hand in hand. Romans 12, 2 says, and be not conformed, shaped or molded, to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be ye what? Transformed, metamorphosis, and progressively change as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. There it is again, what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will, plan and purpose for your life. Ultimately, you gotta remember this, at the very beginning, God said this in Genesis 1, let us make man, right? And let us make man in our what? Image according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. So you get the revelation that in the heart and mind of God, when he created the first man, that that man was to be conformed to the likeness of God, that God's intention was for us to live in a way that brings glory and honor to him. And listen, we all have had a date of birth. We've all been released by God into the earth. Some people walk this earth and never do this never come through the date of salvation, right? And the Bible says the man that has not Christ is damned. But when you as a child of God and you come to the revelation that you need the Lord, you have what they call the date of salvation, the DOS. And the date of salvation changes your whole existence because you go back to relationship with God. Come on, and then you can live out your days. Now, what is the thing that I'm supposed to be doing? I'm supposed to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ while I'm here supposed to be walking out my faith. Doesn't mean I'm supposed to be perfect. It just means I'm supposed to be walking out my faith while I'm here on the earth. Right? So, so what do we know? What do we know about Jesus? Because Paul tells us in the book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, that he was groaning for them and praying for them, watch this, so that Christ would be formed in them. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where it gets real. This is, where, this is where all of this kind of begins to make sense. Because if I am, watch this, supposed to be conformed to the likeness of Christ, then I've got to allow Christ to be formed in me. I've got to allow the, the, the character and the power of the Holy Spirit, come on, and the new birth experience to so impact my life, come on, that it aligns me and conforms me and, and shapes me and molds me into the likeness of Jesus. In other words, that Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren, that we are supposed to walk like Christ. Well, what, what, what did Christ walk like? Number one, he had fellowship with the Father, right? He, he was connected to, to his daddy. That, that you found him regularly going off and praying and talking to the Father in every moment, being led by the Spirit, even when he had to go out into the wilderness. He had fellowship with the Father. He, he, before he raised Lazarus from the dead, he said, Father, I'm so glad that you hear me. He was a prayerful man. He was a man who had a relationship with his Father. Watch this. He walked in obedience toward the Father, right? He said, I didn't come to do my, my will, but I only came to do the work and the will of the Father who sent me. He loved and served people. I'm, I'm, I'm talking practical theology now. I'm not talking something that's going to make you shout and jump. I'm not talking about something that's going to make you excited. But watch this. Jesus loved people. He didn't judge people. He, he spoke truth, but he loved people, right? And he gave us the reality of what the, all of the prophets and the commandments hang on Matthew 22, right? That you would love God, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If I'm going to be conformed to Jesus, I need to know what Jesus was like. I need to know what Jesus did. I need to know how he walked and how he moved. Right? He, he lifted up the lowly. He healed the sick. He preached the word of God. Come on. He served those who were less fortunate. He washed the feet of his disciples. Jesus was a servant. He was God himself. He thought it not robbery to step out of heaven and become lowly according to Philippians, the second chapter. Come on. And he did it for the joy that was set before him. Watch this. We got to remember that he served people. He served humanity. He served the poor. He ministered to the broken. Jesus was concerned. He healed the broken and served humanity. This was Jesus. Watch this. He walked in authority. 
If we're going to be conformed to the likeness of Christ, we've got to know, watch this, that as, a, as children of God, on our day of salvation, we have authority, come on, over spirits and demons and all kinds of principalities. We can fight, come on, in the spirit. We have authority by God. Jesus walked in authority, so much authority, that when the demons heard him coming, they fell down and they worshiped him and begged not to be thrown out of a region. He would just speak and demons would move, right? He, we've got to learn how to walk in the same authority as Jesus. Why? Watch this. And then the reality was that Jesus had the Spirit of God on him. I want to take you over to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, because I think this is a, a real simple revelation. Talking about Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, one. The Spirit of wisdom, two. The Spirit of understanding, three. The Spirit of counsel, four. The Spirit of might, five. The Spirit of knowledge, six and the spirit of the fear of the Lord, seven, right? The seven spirits of God that are spoken about in the text of the scripture, talking about what Christ would walk in, what God would walk in while he was here on the earth. Let me say it again. The spirit of the Lord, number one, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Here's the reality. That's how Jesus walked. That's how we need to walk. If I'm going to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus, if I'm going to return back to my original and be what God has called me to be, what he's predestined me to be, come on, I've got to learn how to walk, watch this, in the spirit of God. The Bible tells us, come on, that we should not walk in the flesh, but we should walk in the spirit, right? In Romans 8, right? That we should have the spirit of wisdom. And James 1 tells us what? That all wisdom, come on, comes from above. Proverbs 4 tells us that we should get understanding. In all of our getting, we should get an understanding, right? And we understand the spirit of counsel. Uh, Zechariah reminds us it's not by might nor by power but by my what? Spirit says the Lord. And so we have this revelation that if I'm going to conform to the likeness of the Son, come on, if I'm going to fulfill my destiny, if I'm going to be unstoppable, come on, I've got to conform. He said those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the likeness of his Son Jesus. And if the likeness of Jesus is the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, or the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and the spirit of wisdom, then we've got to walk in that, right? I've got to walk in that. If, if Paul is telling us in Romans 8, 29, right, that I'm going to be unstoppable, but here's the reality. I've got to be walking in what God has called me to walk in. I, I want to take you over to another uh, uh, passage of scripture that, you know, most people know. But watch this, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the spirit, the results of his present with us, presence with us is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while we're waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. In other words, because, watch this, these are the characteristics of the Spirit of God and the fruit of the Spirit of God. Who is that? The Spirit of the Son. And so we get it now. In other words, if I'm going to conform to the likeness of Jesus, I've got to walk in love. If I'm going to conform to the likeness of Jesus, I've got to have, watch this, joy. I've got to exude peace. I've got to be patient. I've got to show kindness. Come on, I've got to allow goodness to be in my life. I've got to be gentle. I've got to be faithful. I've got to practice self-control. And so the reality is, is that uh, when, 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 when Paul says, come on, that, that he predestined you to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus, well, I've got to know that the likeness of Jesus is the spirit of Christ in me and producing fruit in my life. So the question is, you could do like a litmus test and you could say, wow, am I, am I walking in love? Do I have joy? Is there peace in my life? Because the Bible tells us in, in the Amplified uh, Version that, that the Spirit, the presence of the Spirit will produce this in my life. And so if, if, if you were to go down this list and you were to find out, man, what, what's missing in my life? Is it peace? Is it love? Is it joy? Is it patience? Is it self-control? Because if Romans 8, 29 is true, we have been, we are being conformed to the likeness of Jesus. That means we've got to walk like Jesus walked. Let me take you over to uh, 2 Thessalonians. This will be my last passage of Scripture for the day. But we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God, what, has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. I want you to grab this. Remember this. Let me, let me give it to you again. Before there ever was anything, come on, there was God. 
It was God, come on, that carried you before there ever was you. Come on, you were with God. And God released U.S. humanity into the earth and gave you a date of birth. And that date of birth was when you were naturally born into the earth. We've all had one or else we wouldn't be here. And then watch this, as you walked out your life, even as a sinner, even as a sinner, come on, you were walking out your life. Come on, and one day you met a man by the name of Jesus. Maybe you haven't met him yet. I want you to know, come on, that in the big plan of God, you are supposed to be saved. You're supposed to be a child of God. But when you meet him, come on, transformation takes place. Forgiveness takes place. Come on, um, peace comes into your life. You learn, come on, how to love God and serve God with all of your days. And as you come to the DOS, the day of salvation, it changes everything. Transformation takes place. You become saved. You become a child of God. You begin to walk in the things of God. And this is what God's plan is for your life. Those whom he foreknew or knew before, those he predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. So he released you into the earth in the natural to get you to the place, come on, where you could be, uh, where you could be saved and become a child of God. And it says here, come on, that we are walking through this process. Watch this. And we have been chosen for salvation to, to be sanctified, to become children of God, that we may do what? Good works. So from my day of salvation to the day of my death on this earth, I've got to do the work of the kingdom. I've got to do the work of heaven. I've got to do the work of Jesus. I've got to be a son of the king. Watch this so I can represent him. I've got to represent Jesus to the world. It was God's intention from the very beginning. Are you with me today? And if you're with me, then you understand between here and here, you've got to be about the work of the kingdom. You can't be about division. You can't be about gossip. You can't be about backstabbing. You, can't, you did all that between here and here, right? You did all, all that running crazy foolishness between here and here. But when you come to know Jesus, come on, there should be a transformation. It is a process. We're not perfect overnight. But my focus, come on, should be being conformed to the sun. My focus, why? Because it makes me unstoppable. When I'm walking in a way that God has called me to walk, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. When I'm doing the will of the Father, come on, you can lie about me, stab me in the back, take my hair, try to curse me. It don't matter. Why? Because I'm doing the will of the Father. I'm protected. I'm under, watch this, the shadow of his wings. And between the date of salvation and the date of death, come on, I want to be able, I want God to be able to say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. What have I done? I've been conformed to the likeness of Jesus. Christ was formed in me and I begin to grow up spiritually in my walk. Come on, and until the day I die on this earth, come on, I will serve him with every uh, fiber of my being. Until the day I die, come on, I will walk with him with everything that is in my heart. Why? Because I know ultimately when I die here as a child of God, come on, I will return back to the Father to live with him in eternity. This is a very simple grab, but it gives a complex reality that I began with God. Come on, and watch this. I will return to God on the day of my salvation. I will live with God on the earth, but then I will return to God, come on, when I die. This is the beauty for me of Romans 8, 29. It's real simple. Those he foreknew, he also predestined. The goal of the predestination was that we would be conformed into the likeness of his son Jesus, that Jesus would be our example so that from the day of our salvation to the day of our death, we can model our life after him. And then when we are done here, we can return back to our source. We can go back to our father and live out eternity with him in glory. Listen, maybe you're out there today and, and you have never said yes to the Lord. You never even considered Right? That God has thought about you before you were ever on this earth. If you're watching me today, it's no mistake. If you're watching me today, it very well could mean that God chose you before the foundation of the world. If you're lost, I want you to know you can be found. If you are a sinner, I want you to know you can be saved. If, if you have lost your way, I want you to know God can bring you back into the fold. This is the God we serve. This is the God of love. Christ Jesus left heaven came down here to die on the cross that you and I could be saved. If you're out there today and you say, listen, I don't know this Jesus. I've never accepted him into my heart. I want you to know that you can open your heart to him today. He's calling you. See, because here's the thing. If you're called by God, you know you're called by God. Somebody who's not called by God can hear a message and not feel anything. But someone who's called by God, there's a drawing by the Holy Spirit in you that is saying you need to get your life right. You need to be saved. You need to return back to church. You need to return back to Jesus. 
You need to come back to the kingdom. And so if that's you today, I want you to know that God is calling you and he's drawing you back to himself. You're unstoppable. God's got a plan for your life. And it was ultimately that you should live like Jesus. Won't you pray a simple prayer with me? Dear Lord, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. I give you my life. I give you my all. I give you my everything. Become the center of my life. Forgive me for my sins. Save me, Lord. I want to walk with you forever. I love you. I glorify you. I bless you. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry for my sins. I know I've done some foul stuff. But you said in your word that if I ask for forgiveness, you would forgive me. Please forgive me, Father. I want to be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, I'm telling you, it's the best prayer you'll ever pray. It is called the prayer of salvation. Today is your DOS, your date of salvation, and it is your birth date in the kingdom of God. You return back to the Father. Listen, make sure you uh, reach out to us. Give us a, a, a text, a phone call, an email, whatever. Uh, text in the word saved. We want to be able to reach out to you and disciple you and walk with you through your journey. We believe um, that your best days are ahead of you. All right, listen, grace and peace. Make sure you share the, share the stream. Make sure you hit like. Uh, make sure you follow us on uh, YouTube um, and, and, and our other social media platforms. We just uh, want to connect with you and get to know who you are. God bless you. Hey, listen, till next time, grace and peace.